Okay, I'm going to continue with this OS dev here. I want to make fonts more generic to kind of go along with the last video where the graphics modes were made more generic. So I want different font types than just strictly 8 by 16, maybe a larger font or smaller or something. So the first thing I'm going to do here is, well, I can go into uh, the font files that I have, right? Test font file here. So kind of similar to last time, I'm going to make sure it all works exactly the same before I introduce different fonts and then load those. I just want to make sure it prints the same, but make the printing a little bit more generic. Instead of hard coding the font width and height, I'm going to get it from the font files themselves. I'm still using basic bitmap font here, just 127, you know, ASCII characters here is all. Well, I did have a space at the start here before it actually starts, the ASCII visible characters. It, you know, I have 31 times 16 in this file. Well, 31 times whatever the font height is. In this case, it's 16 lines for each character um, of zeros. So what I'm going to effectively do is make a sort of header here, which just has the width and the height. It'll just be one byte each. I'll have a font header. Or width and height, so I'm just going to define the width as 8, and then the height is, in this case, 16. So, and then we'll have 0 to 31, ASCII characters, which I'm not doing anything with, and this will be 31 by 16 minus 2. And that should multiply first and then subtract, but to make sure we'll do, that should, you know, that shouldn't really change anything. Okay. I'm not expecting anything to change here, which it shouldn't because that's all in like the zero bytes of the header, so nothing will have changed. So everything works the same. Okay. But now what I can do with that is go into the, the printing or other files that we have and use those values. So we have a font address. So I'm going to put another couple of defines here in the print types, and then I'll also put them in the cursor file, because these are the only two that have this, this define here for the address, so I'll just keep them in here for now. But I'm going to define the width that I did first, which is also going to be at font address. Might be able to do this. I don't know if I can do that. We'll see. And font height will be the width plus one. Not doing super huge fonts, they have to fit within one byte, so 255 pixels or less effectively for the width and height. Those are going to be my limits. But we have the font width and the font height, let's just see if that works. That should effectively be there, okay. So what am I going to do with those? Well, instead of this place here where we have 16 and 8, this 8 is okay because it stands for a byte, 8 bits, but this 16, this 8, stand for the, the font character dimensions. So the 16 is the height um, and lines of pixels, I guess, and then eight is the width. So I'm gonna change this to font height. That won't work, because that'll be the, the hex address. So never mind, don't do that. <laughs> I'll set the, the bytes here. I'll have the font width, which I don't know if that'll work because this is I don't know if it's case sensitive or not and see, we'll find out. If it gives an error, then I'll change it for this being the same name as, as this up here. Um, but this I can set to a byte pointer to the font with memory address that we're setting up here, which should be 6,000 right now. I'll do the same thing for the height. Well, that's a byte pointer. I want to get the value there, actually. Well, let's do that. Let's dereference that and get the, the one byte values there. Okay. So then here I should be able to use the font height and the font width. Instead of hard coding 16 and 8. So wherever I have these 16s, I should be able to replace with font height. Search for 16. There we go. This will multiply by font height. 
And I'll just replace all these. I could do a global find replace, but I kind of just want to see where these are at first. There's not too many areas that they're going to be. But yeah, just finding and replacing 16 with font height here. Uh, but okay, so we'll see if that changes anything. Um, let me replace the eights as well. Not there, that'd be over here. Font width. And cursor will be multiplied by font width for the frame buffer whenever it moves. This printing will change in a bit when I make it more generic. So there'll be a little bit more code whenever I actually print the character, but that'll be in a, in a little bit. I'll also, if I have enough time, if I don't spend too much time yakking, I can. I uh, refactor this file because I found a good way to do that with other functions that I can make um, for memcopy, for example. But I'll do that later. Let's see if that works. It does not. Undeclared identifier font with 1D. Okay. Yeah, it needs to be address with 2Ds. There we go. So that is redefined because I can't do that. Okay. So we'll just make this 6,000. I don't know a better way of doing that, but that is okay. Not with macro redefine Y. Previous definition is there. Font height is font width. Do I have to put this in parentheses? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, that's in the cursor, that's why. Okay, I didn't like it because it was in the cursor file. Yeah, so let me change that. I think that was the issue. I'll put parentheses here anyway to make myself feel better. Okay, that's good. They should be the same size, so that's good. I'll just keep changing these to be sure. And yeah, fonts still print. Okay, still everything prints. That is very slow, but I'll try to fix that in a bit. So there was one other area in the editor though, before I go on and add more files, I wanted to change where this is hard coded. If we have a 16 or 66 or something somewhere, there was some areas in here where I'm drawing stuff like at the bottom of the text editor. Yeah, here, this has a 16. So I wanna change that to be like font height, which means I need to define those values. So I'll put it here. So font height, it's an 8-bit pointer to the font height, which I don't have defined, but that is okay. I'll put that up here. Um, we'll just put it after here. Define font height. We can do the same as in the other ones. So. In the uh, print types file, I'll just do this and font height will be font with plus one. You can also put 6001 in hex in here. I'm just doing this in case, you know, I change this value later. I don't have to change it there because I'll probably forget to do that sometimes. Uh, but okay, that's the font height. That's minus two because minus two lines. I don't remember if I had any other places. I just know when I draw the text at the bottom, I do want that to look okay. The only other place would be the hex editor, right? So let's look for that. Oh, there it is. Because I know I draw stuff at the bottom, but that is in this thing here. So let's just look at the bottom here. Yeah. All right. I think I should just have to change these. Those two places, hopefully. Undeclared identifier, is that at the bottom? 1015? Yeah, it's at the bottom here. Okay. Um, well, I could put it up here, I guess. It has to be a compile time constant, or else you can't really define it sort of globally. That's why I was kind of not doing that, but we'll see. This, this might work. I'm not sure this will, but we'll see. No, it's not a, yeah, I didn't think it was. Okay. 
Uh, that is all right. I'll put that back there. And we'll just put it here. At the other place that it wanted. So that should be okay. Okay. 616 we'll do. So the editor, this should still work, yeah. So this still shows up down here, it's still 16. Okay, so the reason I did that in, in the editor is because if we use a font with a different height, then that value would change, and I still want it to be sort of line relative. So it should still be down here if we use a different font. But if that changes later, then I'll know there's a bug and we can, we can change that. Binary file still shows up there, okay. So different fonts, files, well, I'm still sticking with bitmap fonts, just bitmap fonts, just because they're easy. So I went and tried to find some of those. So this is just one place I found, which is bitmap fonts, this guy to, to Kate, or to Kate, however. It, this has like an old GitHub with bitmap font, fonts in it. And I was looking for the BDF font format. So I'm just going to use Terminus, just because I've heard of that before. So Terminus font. Um, the B is for bold. The N, I think, is for normal. So for an 8x16, I don't know what the V is. Let's look at what that is, because I don't know what that is. Bold, R, normal. I don't know. Um, but the U16N would be like 8x16 um, for most of these. So I wanted to choose fonts that had the same width and height, because these can change, at least for the BDF format. They don't all have to be 8x16 in height, but this one is. A lot of these are. So Terminus has the same width and height for all of their characters, at least for the ASCII, so I chose that. And it also has bitmaps. To translate into a font that works for this OS, you can just extract the bitmaps and then use it as, you know, my, my other test font file. So that's kind of what I did um, in my test OS, which I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and copy those files back. Um, and I had terms, yes. I'll just copy the term ones here into source. So now I have term U16N and U18N. So what those look like, because I already extracted all the bitmap areas here, just for the ASCII 0 to 127. So same as my other file, it's just the bitmaps in that BDF font file. You know, I changed them here. So in some cases, the bitmap started with you know, the characters of hex, and I had to add a zero before it, so it worked within, you know, netwide or flat assembler that I'm using to assemble these files, but, and I already had the font header here, 8 by 16 for Terminus U16N, and I also had, I also got just a bigger font, which is Term U18N, which is a 10 by 18 size, so a little bit bigger, which I'll probably go using for these videos going forward, and so it'll be a little easier to, uh, to see. I changed this times directive here. Brain's a little scattered. So in, in the 8 by 16 fonts, each character is 16 lines in height, right? So 31 times 16. And then you can subtract the two bytes for the header. In this 10 by 18 font, the characters are 18 sort of lines in height. Um, since these are words, this is a longer. 8, 10 is over 8, so you need two bytes to hold each line. Um, and it's 18 lines of, of two bytes effectively. So 18 times two is 36 bytes per character. So if I wanted to ask you to start at 32 again, I had to do 31 times 36, which is 18 times two. Instead of over with a 16 height character, it'd just be multiplied by 16 since they're all one byte for the height. So that was the only differences there. Just want to make that clear. Just a bitmap of the larger file, and since it is larger than the 16-bit file, instead of 2048, I had to do, well, all the way up here, 4608, to get it to fit, you know, at the next sector boundary. So that's, you know, however many sectors that is. Um, I wanted to try to learn more Unix tools, so 4608 divided by 512 is 9, so I guess that's 9 sectors. But, you know, BC is cool, little desktop calculator. Um, instead of going to my, you know, Windows environment, I want to be more in, in Unix. Okay, so what do I do now that I have these font files? How do I load them? How do I do things? Well, I'll need, I'll need something to load them, of course. Um, but I would, what I could do to start off is change the boot sector to where instead of the test font, we load the other file, which means I'll have to label them within the, in the file table. So this font here in memory, 
we're just taking you know memory stuff so actually i'm not going to change that don't need to change the boot sector because we can load it at the same area in memory but here where we have test font i can rename this and do the uh open the make file here do the the terminal as well so assembly files we have test font i'm going to do term u 16 and i think that's what it is uh, let me just make sure yeah, term u 16 in and term u 18 in. So I'm going to add those to the make file here. Term u 18 in. And then instead of test font, I'm going to do 16 in. But at the end of here, um, term u 18 in, we'll do test font. At the end of the temp files, because those will be concatenated in order over here eventually. So that should be okay. Then I'll change the file table. So where this will be term u 16 in and then after the editor we'll have term u 18 in and the test font do that okay because that's what i have laid out here right test um, after the editor here I have editor, term u18, and test font. Okay, so that's what I have here. So the editor is 2, 1. So I'm going to set the input base inside of our calculator to 16, and then the output base to 16, so that we're working with, he with hexadecimal. So I'm going to do 3a plus 21. Is that 43? Is that what it's saying? I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> I'm assuming that's what it means, is 43. I haven't used this before. I'm learning how these things work. <laughs> no, that's 5B, so I don't know why it says 43, then that's interesting. Okay, never mind then. I'm not going to use the calculator here. <laughs> that's okay. I'll learn how that works a bit better later. But okay, we want 5B. After here, this will be 5B. And it was... 4608, right? Term U18 in at the bottom. 4608, so I think that was nine. Nine sectors here. It's 512, yeah. <laughs> okay, so 5B plus nine. Nine plus 5B is 64, that's a good number. 64, okay, and then test font is 2048, which is 4, in hex, okay. Those should all be in order. The font is still at 4, or well, still at 6, taking up 4 sectors. So loading the font within the boot sector should be okay here, because we're loading 4 sectors from sector 6, which is where this is located, okay. So it should look different. Should be a different font, hopefully. See if it runs. Do 800 by 600 again, 15 bits per pixel. So this, yeah, this is a different font. Should be a little clearer to read. It is slightly smaller than the, the sort of GNU Unifont that I based the, the test font out of, but it should be a little easier to read, a little clearer, hopefully. But I will, I will um, change printing to work with different font sizes so we can try out the larger one as well. And I'll also probably make a test font command just to see. And this is slow, that's okay. So we go to the editor, make a new font, yeah. Okay, test, test font. We already made a test font, that's just whatever name we wanna call it. Okay, so that's all good. So now I can go and change. Um, the print types file to see if we can work with printing different or well we'll make we'll make printing generic for the character so that whatever size it is we can be generic here it's not going to be this isn't going to be set for 8 bits only it can be wider than 8 bits and also larger than 16 i'll go ahead and change to do that okay just as a quick interlude if you want to use bc as your calculator if you set the in the input base first then all numbers following it will be in that input base so here 
the obase 16 didn't work because this 16 is counted as a hexadecimal digit because of the ibase 16. So if, if you put one zero here, it should work. But, you know, just to be sure, set the output base before the input base, <laughs> since this will still be 16 and won't be counted as a hex 16, which would be 22. So then, you know, you can do calculations here. So just, you know, a quick aside, not that it matters or pertains to anything else in this video, but there you go. <laughs> Okay, so to make printing a generic font character here, uh, more generic, or well, yeah, <laughs> to make printing a character here a little more generic, I'm going to change that 6000 hard code there. Um, I want to get a more generic size of the complete character in bytes, and then I also want to get the size of each sort of row of the character in the font. So if we have 8 by 16, the height is 16 lines. Well, each line takes up one byte because it's 8 pixels wide, but if we have something like a 10 by 18 font, each line will be two bytes, because 10 is over 8 and less than 16. Each line will be two bytes, and the height will be, you know, the line times the number of bytes in a line. So, that, I mean, the height, the height is 18, but it's two bytes, you know, for each one of those lines. So I'm going to have a couple other uh, variables here in the print, print types file under print uh, character. I can put them, I'll put them after font character. So I'm going to have a byte for... I don't know, bytes per character line or something. I'm not sure. Not a great name, but that's all right. And I'll also have one for character size. So what I'm going to do is set those before we print the character here. Or I could set them up there, either one. I'm going to set the bytes per uh, character line to be sort of the width of the font minus one. Uh, divided by 8, you'll see what I'm doing in a second, divided by 8 plus 1. So what am I doing here? I'm taking the width of the font, which for an 8 by 16 font would be 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. 7 divided by 8 is 0 if we're doing integer arithmetic, which these are ints, so that's what it's doing. Um, so that'll be 0, but then we'll add a 1 by default to get it back to 1 byte. We have something like a 10 by 18 font. The width is going to be 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 divided by 8 here for ints will be 1. 1 plus 1 will be 2. So it's kind of a sort of hacky solution to get the, the number of bytes per each character line, which is why I called it that. <laughs> and that should work for whatever it is. If it's a really small font, uh, under 8 pixel width, it'll still have at least a 1 byte default. And if it's over 8, it should have the correct number of bytes, I'm hoping. 16 should be 2, it'd be 15 divided by 8, which would be 1, plus 1 is 2, yeah. So a 17 pixel width font would be 3 bytes, because it would be 16 over 8, 2 plus 1, which would be 3, okay. So I think that should work out. And then here what I can do is set the character size to the bytes per line, multiplied by the height of the font, or the number of lines for each character. So that would be the size of a certain character. So for an 8 by 16 font, this should be 1 times 16, which is what our current one is. And then a 10 by 18 font, that should be 2 times 18, which should be 36. That should be correct. But then here where we're getting the character, we need to offset by the size of the character instead of the font height. So for an 8 by 16 font, this will not change. Font height is 16, the size of a character will be 16. But for other fonts, it could change. So this needs to be made a little bit more generic here, like this. So from the base address where a font is stored at, right now it's at you know, 6,000, I'm getting the character times the size of the character to offset into you know, our ASCII sort of table there, and then minus this character to get to the start. Um, so this should still work with that. So I will change this, but I just want to see if that works right now. Um, it does not. Bytes per line, bytes per character line. That's right. Bytes per line. Bytes per character line. Still 1F21 and 10. Okay. So, yeah, the printing still works. So we know that's all good. So we're good to go here. Okay. So the character printing, this will have to change. For each line, well this this will be okay, but for each line we want to print out the number of bytes that are in that line, not just one byte, how this is currently with 8 bits set. 
So that's going to change. I'm also going to have another thing here, but I'm going to put it within the for loop. Um, this is just for me to, to cut off drawing whenever we're done drawing one line of the font. Because, well, I guess it kind of depends how they're stored as well. But if we take the ones I have currently, I'll look at U18N, since these are word sized, if I go at the bottom here, for example, for the cursor, since these are word sized, they're two bytes, the start of memory here would be the CO, and then the 7F would be this, this part over here. So what I'm going to do is, you know, read the first byte and then read the second byte, but after we printed out the number of pixels I need to draw, since we're already drawing the background color, after a screen clear or whatever, I shouldn't need to draw that necessarily. Basically, after we've drawn the number of pixels that are the width of the font, I'm going to stop drawing so we don't have to waste processing, you know, drawing the other pixels here because that might not be correct or we can just skip over it. So basically, if it's a 10 pixel wide font, I want to draw 10 pixels and then go to the next line. Or if we're done, I want to stop. If it's an 8 pixel wide font, I'll draw the 8 pixels and then stop. But I'm just going to keep a counter here for the number that we've drawn so we can stop early or whenever we can stop, <laughs> I guess. So, not so good name, but number of pixels drawn, I'll reset to zero here. Okay, and then after this, I'm going to have um, sort of a, a, a for loop wrapper. I'm going to have a for loop wrapper here. We'll make it an int. Okay, I'm going to call this, um, I guess, byte, whatever byte we're on, will equal the bytes per row value minus one while it's greater than or equal to zero. And then I'm going to decrement. So what this is going to do is be a wrapper for all of that. Bytes per row minus one, just to make sure that this greater than or equal to zero loop works. So if this starts, if it's a one byte per row character, like an eight by 16 font, this will be zero, but it'll still go through once, you know, because of this condition here. If it's two bytes, it'll start at one and then zero and, you know, um, to ensure it goes through all bytes of each line of the character. So within that, we're drawing the bits. Okay, so when we're going through and setting which, you know, eight bits out of which byte that we're drawing, uh, this will need to change because we're not going by one byte per line anymore. So this will actually be line multiplied by... I'm going to have this be line multiplied by the bytes um, per character line and then add in our byte value here. Yeah, added with our byte value here. So <laughs> line times however many bytes per line, and it'll start out at line zero. So this will be zero. And then we're going to add in what byte that we're drawing as part of the character, which is here. So this doesn't really make too much sense for an 8 by 16 font, because this, this byte will always be one. So line, you know, the first one will be zero plus one, and then zero plus, well, Zero plus one is not good. It'll just be zero. Actually, it'll just be zero. So yeah, that'll all be zero. Okay, but if it's a 10 by 18 font, it'll be two bytes per row, so it'll start at one. Um, the first line will be zero, be zero plus one. We'll draw one byte, you know, into the, into the font line, and then we'll draw zero bytes into the font line. So this doesn't make sense because I'm not showing what it's going to do, right? So if we have, I'll just go back down here because this I drew out the, the binary. If we have something like this, and we're drawing this line of the character that we're drawing, whatever, you know, the first line's going to be zero. So assuming we're on zero, this multiplication will be zero. We'll add byte. If it's two bytes per row, this will be two minus one. So it'll start at one. So this whole expression here will be one. So if we take the start of the font character and add one, we'll be in the second byte that we're going to draw first, right? According to how this font's laid out. So it'll be drawing these first. And then after that, the byte will be set to zero. So we'll be drawing the zeroth byte first. So we're starting at a one byte offset and then drawing the second byte. If it were um, a three byte width file, you know, we had this over here, then it would start out offset by two because the bytes per row would be three minus one is two. So it would offset line zero plus two, which would be this byte, and then it'd go one, and then it'd go zero. So I'm drawing sort of the, the last byte offset in, inside of each line of the character and then going down by one, if that makes sense. Hopefully that's a little easier to understand. And then when the line, when the line increments, say to one, 
we'd be, do be doing one times the bytes per line, which if it's a two byte thing here, uh, one times two is two. So since the first line is bytes zero and one, the second line starts at byte two, would be bytes two and three. The next line is bytes three and four, five and six, seven and eight, so on and so forth. So we'd get the first line and then we'd offset, you know, however much bytes we need for the, the last eight bits here, draw it and then do that. And then when line goes to two, it would be two times the bytes per line. So two times two would be four, which would be the third line here, plus whatever byte value we're on offset into that line. So we're basically, we're getting each line. If it's two bytes, we're only offsetting one into it and then zero offset. But if it was three bytes, it would be offsetting two bytes and then one byte and then zero bytes. So then it goes through all the bytes of each line of the character and all the lines, and that effectively draws the character. So a little confusing, but you know, I had, to, I had to work through this a bit to come up with this solution. It was a lot uglier before. <laughs> this is after refactoring, but yeah, after we draw it, I'm going to increment by bytes per pixel, and I'm going to increment the number of pixels that we have drawn to know when to stop drawing. Um, okay, and then if we've reached the point where we can stop drawing, so if it equals the font width, if it equals the font width, then what I can do is reset it for the next line. Um, and break out of the loop. Break out of the loop, we don't need to draw anything else. We're done drawing this current line. So if done drawing all pixels in current line of character, stop and go on. Okay. So that will break out of this bit for loop to go to the next bytes per row. You know, it'll reset this because it'll increment when we draw a pixel. If we're done with it, then this loop will break. We'll go to the next line. If it's after all of this, then, you know, we'll go to the next, we'll go to the next line because that would be after this for loop, which is the byte. So after we've drawn all the bytes within the current line of the character, we'll go to the next line of the character and then continue drawing those. Okay. Some other small things I might change later is stuff like this where I have a plus plus that I'm checking. You know, what I could do is just pre increment that and then check instead of doing that, but I might do that later to save a couple lines if it makes more sense in areas. Right now I'm not doing that. Um, but okay, we'll see if this works for, um, for printing a character or if I was horribly wrong and just don't know what I'm doing, which is more likely to be the case. Did you mean bytes per pixel? I might have. Bytes per row, that is not right. I meant bytes per character line, that's what I meant which is a row of the character, which is what I was thinking, but not typing. What I should have been typing, which is this. Um, okay. So still, one if... 1024768832. So this should still work the exact same, which is good. That is a good thing. I thought it was going to break by now. So I'm glad that works. So I can make something now to change the font. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a little command to change it. So we should be able to see it update and then go on our way here. That will be in the kernel. And eventually I want to extract these commands to somewhere else. I think I've said that before, but I'm still putting that on the back burner, right? Oh well. <laughs> but I'll make another command here in the kernel. Um, I'll call it change font to be very original. Uh, make that a capital change current font. Okay, and I'll go down a bit. I'll just go down to the bottom, go up. That's faster. Check file extension, load file. Um, after here, right? This is change colors command. Put something here. I need to delineate these better in the source. You know, but right now we'll just, we'll just do that. So I'll copy that line so I can put it here. This will be change font command. This will be command change. No, oh, didn't want to do that. Command change font. 
Okay, so what is this going to do? I'm going to assume the user types in two tokens in the shell at the command line. We'll type in, we'll type in change font and then the name of the font to change to. Let me check one thing. I need to change these. I didn't do this yet. Yeah, these fonts here are bin. Um, these need to be FNT for font. That's how I'm going to check. Check by file extension. Let me change those right quick. These will be technically different types of files. They'll still be flat binary, but these will be counted as font files. So this is how it's going to be used. I'm going to put usage. I might incorporate usage things to the other commands later, because that's something that I like actually within Unix a little bit. But I'm assuming they're entering two tokens, the font that they want to change to in the change font command. So how do we do that? It's basically loading the font file that they chose to memory at the location. So do I have stuff for like file name and other things? I have token file name. I could try that. I could try that here. Token file name one. Although we have it within the tokens array, right? That'll be the second token here. So what I can do is check. Yeah, I can do this. Um, oh, that's right below where I'm at. Good. Okay. <laughs> Let me do this here. I'm going to copy this stuff. Put it there. Okay. First, check if font exists. Command string tokens length one. Except command string will not be that. We'll be checking for. This is a bad way to do this. I think if they're all ten characters, no, that won't be right though. Where are we? Where am I getting the tokens here? Here. Yeah. So we set the length. We increment after we got one by white space. Go to the next one, it'll be plus equal 10, yeah, so that should be okay. So it should be at 10, going for that length. This is just a very bad way of typing this out because it makes no sense, but that's okay. Uh, name is second token, okay. The pointer is zero, we don't have it. Instead of failure, I need another message. I'll put it here. This will be font not found. And we'll just do that. Which I don't think I need to do that. I can probably just type it within here, right? But whatever, I'll leave it there. <laughs> I want to check if it is a file type of font. Uh, that's not in this file. I don't fill that out, do I? No. Um, but it's after the file pointer, so what I can do is check if string compare file pointer plus 10. Yeah, plus 10, that's where the extension lives, so I'll do plus 10. Check if it equals FNT, which is a constant. Oh well, for three characters. So if that does not equal zero, it doesn't match. Oh, this one I'll change and we'll do file is not a font. <laughs> I'll just do that. And put some new lines there. Can't I do RN? I forgot I could do that. I might be doing that. That's a little easier to type, right? That should be equivalent to 0xA, 0xD. Maybe I'll switch these and that. I don't know why I haven't thought of doing that before. Oh well. That should be equivalent. If it's not, I can change it. But if it's not a font, just print. File is not a font. That's an error. Error. <laughs> Extension doesn't match. If it does match, if it is a font, then what I want to do is load it. is a valid font load it to memory load it to memory at the font address which i don't or yeah i do i have print types which has that font address in it 
up here. We have the address specified in there and in the cursor file, but it's there, so it should be found within this. So what I should be able to do, check for load file here and do that. So I'll just copy this over here. This is if there's an error. Try to load it to memory. So I'm going to load, assuming this works, I'm going to load this stuff to memory here. The token starting at 10, the length will be tokens length one. Instead of allocated address, this is going to be loaded to the font address. And the extension is FNT. Or actually, it'll load it and bring back the extension, right? Load file. I think this fills out the extension. Yeah, it gets the variable to pass back. Okay, so this will get the name, the name length, the address, and the extension. So hopefully that works. But if it doesn't work, we have an error. So I'll print out an, an error here. File could not be loaded. I'll just do that. Okay, but assuming all these went through, then it did load and we're good to go. <laughs> At this point, the new font should be loaded and being used. Should be loaded and in use now. So I'll just do a test string to make sure that that does work. Put this and I'll be, it'll be font loaded. I don't have the name of the font. I could save like the name. That might be good, right? That might be good to do. That would be at the file pointer. Or actually no, because that was used in the other one. Um, I could save it within like a file name variable. I could, I could do that. Let's do that. So before we load it, I'll do that here. Save file name. Um, actually, no, I can do, do I have string copy? I don't remember what all I have. <laughs> I have compare, in compare, length, I have copy. Okay, string copy. Source to dest, well, source does not have a null. I'll do string in copy. So we'll copy into token file name one, um, the file pointer values, which starts at zero for the file name. File pointer offset zero. And we'll go t up to 10. Should be padded with zeros, that should be okay. So I'll do that, assuming that worked. Down here we'll do font loaded. SSR slash n. Uh, and it will load token file name one. Hopefully, although that might not be null terminated, so. I don't know if I can do this. This is kind of jank. <laughs> Put a null on the end. That's kind of jank. Oh well. I'll see if that works. Assuming that does, we'll print the font name. And then I'll print out the values for it. So we'll do width. And for this I can do deck. And it will be font width, because we have those defined. Or wait, no we don't. I'll have to define those. No I don't, never mind. <laughs> put those down. I'm going to make this a define as well. But I'll put that down here. Font width. Should put these in some other file, so I'm not defining them several times, but that's okay. This will be the height. Um, I do want to make this a constant. Let me, or well, a define. So it won't take up memory space. That would be good, right? This won't be an equal, it'll be that. Okay, there we go.
we should have the width and height values. So I should be able to do, uh, assuming we loaded it, the font width here. I can just do a space after. And the height. And we'll do the height. Then I'll just have a new line there. Okay. Then we'll move the cursor. And we'll go back to print the prompt and everything right at the top. If I do continue. Got to remember that. It should go back up here. Print the prompt and everything. Yeah, right there. Okay, so that should be okay. So if we put in change font and then a font name, it should hopefully try to load it. Check if it's a file for fonts. If it is, it should say it's loaded because it would have been loaded here. And then it should give the width and height values. And then that font should be in use because we loaded it to the address, which is 6,000. Um, so let's see if all of that works, which it probably doesn't, right? I see new and 8t to parameter pointer. Okay, gotcha. That's at 550. Argument to file name here. So 550 was here. Um, okay, can I do plus 10? Unsigned character to const new and 8 pointer. So file pointer. I'll do the same thing there. I five nine. This one plus ten. I can do this instead. Run the make command. Okay. Load file tokens ten again is not good. We need a character pointer. Okay. Expected right paren. Okay, so I can't do that. That's all right. So that is only 10 long. I should make these like 11 long then. Would that work? Would that break everything else? It might. We'll see what happens. It might. Um, what I can also do is set these, since I have a mem copy, right? Or do I have a mem set? Do I have either of those? I have a mem set command here, so what I can do, since the compiler looks for that whenever you're doing sort of array initializations here, I can now set these equal to nulls, and that should work in compile. Although that's separate from this issue, this issue here, so. I'm setting 10 bytes here, so what I need to do set the ending byte to a null. And this might break things in other places. I'm hoping it doesn't, but it might. But I just need to do that so that this error goes away. And then that fixed that. Okay, cool. So 20, 21, and 10. So this is 20 now. 20, which means this goes 2B, 3B, 5C, 65. And the kernel is now 32 sectors. That's 20. This is going to be 20. Font's the same. The other stuff is the same. Okay. So we'll see if this works. Probably doesn't. Vote of confidence. 1024 by 768, we have this stuff here that works. So if I do change font, term u18 in. File is not a font, okay. But it did get to that point, which is good. So what if we do um, the test font? File is not a font, okay. Font down here. So file pointer plus 10, because dot FNT, it needs to be just FNT, because I don't have the dot in the file table. If I had a dot here and I checked for four characters, that would have worked, but that did not work. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense why that did not do anything. One, 
eight and okay that actually okay i was not expecting that to actually work <laughs> uh the cursor i need to change because that printing was not changed that's why you don't see the cursor there but it says font loaded term u18 in uh, with eight height 16 so if i type stuff now the cursor you won't see because that printing's bad but everything should now be in the new font size 10 by 18 terminus font The scrolling is bad too, <laughs> so I have two things I need to, to fix. Okay, but the font does load, which is good. Uh, clear S clears the screen, and then we're getting some artifacting there. Okay, so I need to change the cursor and scrolling the screen. But other than that, stuff seems to be okay. So I'm going to fix those things next. All right, let's fix the cursor here, this printing. Because yeah, it was not changed. Or I could include this in the print types file, include the cursor stuff, which maybe I want to do that instead of typing things twice. But maybe I'll do that later. <laughs> yeah, this is address. 127 is fine, but this needs to be changed to the character size. So I need to copy those as well, put these at the bottom. Bytes per character line and size. Um, and the character, we'll just do all these. So 6,000 is font address. Okay, so bytes per line, getting that, character size, font address will be added to, Yeah, we just need 127, that's true. Times the size minus the size. Well, minus one, actually. Well, one times... The bytes per character line, so this will be bytes per character line. So we get the end of the character and subtract one to get the last line, uh, because that is where the U18 in. That's where the cursor is, at 127. This is the last line. So if we load 127 times the size, it'll be one after here. So we subtract, you know, the bytes per line to get to the start of the last line in this character for the cursor. That's how I'm doing this. Frame buffer, this will be multiplied by uh, the character size. Minus one, I think. Hopefully that's right. Well, not minus one, minus bytes per character line. <laughs> X resolution times the size. Minus the bytes per character line. And I don't, I don't think I need this, but I'm going to do this anyway. Make it a little clearer. Multiply these two and subtract this. And then multiply that by the bytes per pixel. Okay, and then this will have to change. Uh, this I need to change. Let's load the second one. V2. Yeah. To do this stuff. <laughs> It'll just be one line, so I don't need that. But I can do... Uh, all of this, hopefully... Hopefully. Okay, so if we're drawing this, we have the byte, we have the bits in the byte. For each one of those bytes, we'll have eight bits, potentially. We don't need line times this. So we're only drawing one line. We just need to offset by the byte. It should be like one or zero for our large thing here, our large font. And we'll go down. Actually, I don't really need to go down because it's going to change later anyway. Okay, next position. Shouldn't get rid of that because I won't know what it says if I need it. But we'll see if that works for drawing the cursor after we change a font. And before we change a font, I guess. 212111, two, one, one, one. okay. Well, let's make this change first. 21 will be C, C, D. Six, one, one will be D, E, seven. Okay. Oh, but the boot sector has to change. I really need to make it more generic when we load things so I don't have to change these every time because I forget. I forget a lot. That's all right. 
I need to change the make file anyway, because I don't need to rebuild things that haven't changed, and that's the whole point of make, right? Partly. So that's something that's on the radar later. So the cursor is not erased because we didn't change remove cursor, but it does draw, which is good. Or I didn't change it right, which is probably more likely. So if we do change font, okay, it loaded it at the top, which is okay. Clear screen. <laughs> I mean, it draws it underneath, kind of. That's not fully correct. Let me see if that just works if we change the, the remove cursor. Okay, yeah, let me change the remove cursor here to be similar. Be similar. Of course, doing everything twice, because that's the best thing to do, right? Nope, that's okay. Fifteen would be the height minus one, or I can do what I did here. Character size minus minus bytes per character line. Did I do uh, multiplied by bytes per pixel? Yes. Okay. Times character size minus character line. Put another parenthesis here. Times the bytes per pixel. And there. Okay. And then I guess copy the whole thing here. Sure. Except we're only drawing the background color, so we don't need this. Only drawing the background color, so that'll be okay. We draw it, we break, otherwise we get the next bits and do that, okay. So that changed remove cursor. So I'll see if that changed as well. Let me do 1280. 1280 by 720, that's 720p, right? We'll try, that didn't work. So never mind, don't do that. <laughs> oh, now none of this works, that's good. If I do 16. Oh, that's not good. Okay, I gotta debug what I did. Because <laughs> that is not good. Uh, this isn't 16 anymore, I know that. This is font height. And that's font width. Probably not, but that was an issue. That would have come up later. Then remove cursor. And it doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to debug this and I'll be back when I fix it. Okay, so I found the issues here, along with a beer. And I'll go and walk through these right quick. So the major issue that was preventing things from working was that the kernel was just too large. So it is now 21 hex or 33 sectors, something like that. And the kernel starts at 2000 in hex, right? So 2000 plus 33 times 512 was, was over 6000, which is where the font was located. So the start of the font up until however much data into it was was actually part of the kernel. So I moved where the font was at. And all these defines here, I just moved it to 8,000 because even if the font was at 7,000, if it was large enough, it would have ran into 8,000, which is where second stage bootloader and stuff is loaded. So didn't want to mess with that. Just move it way up here to A000. And that seemed to have fixed, you know, some some of the bugs here. That's in these files. I think that's in the kernel as well. Or no, no it's not. <laughs> it's in the editor. Yeah, right here, okay. So that fixed some of those issues. Um, 
but then I had to move other things accordingly. So it, also in the kernel where I'm setting up the initial memory map and everything, um, I changed this to deinitialize from 1000 to a thousand <laughs> instead of this was nine. But since the font's going at A, I'm just going to protect it anyway. So everything below B, 0, 0, 0. And I might increase that again later. But everything below that is reserved now. Instead of below A. So that's good. Um, and of course that needed changes in the boot sector as well. Um, where we load the font in, instead of loading into 6000 like it was, it's now loaded into A. So 0A, zero, 0, 0, 0 where we're loading the font in the boot sector, and then, you know, the kernel still has to change from its sizes, but it's still at B. Um, okay. Okay, so where else did we change things? Print types and cursor and the kernel. Okay. So let me just go over the last kernel change here, because it's small. Um, after I changed the font, I was not resetting the font width and height. So these weren't here before. Uh, so when it did the font width and height, since the the font at uh, at boot time is 8 by 16, width and height were always being set to 8 by 16. So here, after we load a new font within the change font command, uh, before I print it out, I'm just resetting these to, you know, their values. So the 10 by 18 font will now say 10 and 18 instead of 8 by 16 like it was before. Okay. So the other things are in print types and in cursor. So in print types... Um, where do I have this here where we're scrolling? So before, this was not a double parenthesis. I think it was just this. Xres times font height times bytes per pixel. And that is wrong because this will evaluate as scroll plus Xres times font height. It'll add that up first and then it'll multiply by bytes per pixel. It'll go left to right. So I need to do Xres times font multiplied by the bytes before I add on to the base value here. And that fixes the scrolling. Um, also, if this was not font height before, this is now font height. I don't remember. This might have been character size or something, but this is font height. And I think the other ones were okay. I think this one had the double parenthesis here, and this was correct, as well as down as well as down here. Um, this was a bug. This was temp times font height. <laughs> this is what the line was before. So this needs to be temp times eight. I replace one too many eights with the width, or the width rather, not the height. Yeah, I replace one too many eights with the width. So that needs to be temp times eight. Otherwise the color will not be right. That was a little bug, fix that. Um, okay, the next change was scrolling in the line feed again, making sure these parentheses are set up right to multiply all these first before adding to the base. And I think that was the only changes needed here, at least for scrolling. Hopefully I didn't miss anything else. I don't think I changed printing a character. That, that was working fine. Okay, and then the other things were in the cursor file. Okay, so here I'm using font height and font width. I believe this was different before, but I'm now using font height and width here or I at least marked that it was new. So if that if that isn't font height and width, then it needs to be, so I changed it there. Here, where I'm setting the frame buffer, where we're going to draw the cursor, and I changed it to multiply by font height minus one, just because that works for the height in pixels. So whatever it was with character size or whatever, I didn't need that, just font height minus one here works fine. Multiply by bytes per pixel, but also, this needs to be in parentheses here. X resolution times the height minus one, Font height minus one needs to be, this was not parenthesized before, so it would multiply xres times the height and then subtract one, but no. I need to multiply the xres by the height minus one, and then multiply that value by the bytes per pixel. So I need to learn my PEMDAS some more. Go back to grade school, right? That's okay. <laughs> I did fix that. Eventually. Um, these two lines here in remove cursor where we get the bytes per line before we move the frame buffer. I don't need these because I'm not using their values anywhere. So I'm just removing those just for less stuff to have going on. And then this is the same change as above where I change the font height and make sure the parentheses are lined up right. That's all this is. Same thing as before. 
And I think that was the only, those were the only things that were wrong. I can run this again. Although it was changed, let me just make sure. That's a zero, okay. And yeah, there's no more new things, okay. We put this up here, 1024. I pressed an alt, so that might not be correct now. Oh no, it worked, okay. But everything works now, the cursor, the cursor is good and it works. It's moved and removed correctly. Um, scrolling works. Again, it's still slow from before, but it works now. Just to ensure that all the commands are working. And if we change the font to the larger one, then the cursor and everything still works. Printing is good. And scrolling works. No weird colors. So it's all, it's all pretty good now. Although the editor kind of messes up, so that's not good. <laughs> so I guess I can't load anything anymore. That, that would be an issue. Because it's not loading correctly. Okay. Loading to B00. Okay, so A. Yeah, that would probably be, be because of the larger font, I would assume. O base 16, I base 16. So uh, for the larger font size, it's nine sectors. And each sector is 512 bytes, so 9 times that, so that's 1200, plus A000, zero, zero, zero. no, 1200 plus A is B200, so yeah, if it tries to load files at B, that's not going to work, but it says B is free, so that's a bug. I need to somehow mark memory as, as taken, as set, when I load a font, because if the font's bigger. Or smaller, I guess. Because otherwise, that's running into there, and the files are trying to be loaded to B. So that is not working. Which is not great, you know? That's not good. Alternatively, since it fits into B, <laughs> for an easier way, I can just mark up to B. <laughs> for a really simple thing. So I'll just do that there. See if that changes anything. So the first free memory should be at C000. Um, after that change. So let me just change the font again. Make sure, and that does say 10 by 18 from that one bug fix. So if we run the calculator, it loads it to C, so that's good. And then it frees it, um, so that's not good. So it's not loading anything. Okay, does that work? If I don't change the font. No, it doesn't work. Okay, so I need to fix that. Because that is bad. Where I load stuff. I love breaking everything. It's, it's awesome. The allocated address here. I'm not giving it a specific plate, no. Checks the name. Gets the blocks. It does load them correctly. Otherwise it would say it's not loaded. So jumping here is not working to this address. That is not working. So that's good. Let me see if it works in my test uh, setup. Okay, it works in there. So it may be an issue with after, after it's compiled, the, the data and other areas aren't set up correctly because everything's just a lot bigger now. So one thing I did in my test setup was check out the different optimization flags. And I'm using OZ for improved size. So I'm going to try that and see if it fixes that issue. Instead of dash one for optimizing, I'm doing dash OZ. If you did dash OS, it would be some size optimizations. Dash OZ is even more. So it'll make the files a lot smaller, but they should still work the same. So instead of 2121 and 11, we have 1D, 1E, and 0E, which means I have to change this again. So this is 1D, this is 0E, and this is 1E. X will be B plus 1D. I'm hoping this fixes things. I'm really not certain if it will or not, though. 28 plus E, 36. That's five, four, then 
plus 9, the what, 13, so it should be D, 5D, 5D chess. So kernel is 1B sectors, or 1, 1D sectors, right? Yeah. Which means this will be 1C, this will be 1D. I mean, this has the other added benefit of taking up a lot less space. It won't do, like, performance optimizations, though, within reason. It won't be super fast, I would think, because it's focused on size, but you never know. And I can see if that issue was because of that. Um, so it does load, so that's good. Let's try test, test file 1. I'm going to change the font now. I just want to see if it prints. And the other one works. 20 plus 3, 23. Okay. So this is loaded now. 20 plus 3 times 2. 20 plus 6, 26. Okay. Test dose. Test file 2, okay, and it loads, so I think we're good. I think it was just too large. It was either in a weird other data section that it couldn't reach or something or was optimized away. I don't know. That will come up again in the future when the file sizes grow a lot more, but right now that's an easy fix. Just make sure they're compiled to a, a lot lesser size. Not, not really a fix, more of a sidestep, but we'll get back to that when it becomes an issue again. So printing works. It's made generic. Fonts are different. I might set the font to be defaulting to this 18 size because that's easier to see. If it needs to be even larger, let me know. I can get other bitmap fonts and try them out. So the last thing that I wanted to do on this video was kind of optimizing this printing because it's very slow. And also maybe refactor the print character a little bit to not need um, all those lines of code. We can shrink it down a little bit because actually a lot of it's probably unused. To, um, to sort of optimize the scrolling, I'm going to use memcopy function or 32-bit memcopy function, but I'm going to make both. I'm going to make both just because I might have use for the other one. So I'm going to memcopy is going to copy len length bytes from source buffer to the destination buffer. Okay, and it will return the buffer. So this is going to be, put this up a little bit. I'm going to have it be a void pointer mem copy. It's going to take in a void pointer destination buffer, a constant pointer, void pointer source buffer, and a length of bytes we want to move. 32 bits and bytes. And this is going to be a loop. We're going to have i equals 0, 32 bit, i is less than length, i plus plus. So what I'm going to do is have a byte pointer, because this is working off 8 bits at a time for regular mem copy. I'm going to have a byte pointer to the destination buffer, and I'm going to index or offset from there by i. So instead of destination being whatever it is now, it's being you know, accessed 8 bits at a time, and then offsetting it with i. And I'm going to set that equal to the same thing um, for the source buffer. So the 8 bits at source buffer indexed by i are going to be, well the 8 bits of the destination buffer indexed by i are going to be set to the 8 bits of the source buffer indexed by i. So that's what that's doing. And at the end we'll return the destination buffer. That was the shortest thing I could come up with and it's, and it works. So the only other thing I'm going to do is make a memcopy32 which is going to do the same thing, but work off 32 bits instead of 8 bits. So I'm just going to put 4 bytes at a time. Um, these are all the same. Um, so instead of length, we're going to do length divided by 4. 4 bits, 4 bytes, rather, at a time. And uint 8 is going to be uint 32. Uh, 32. So that'll move 32 bits from source to dest offset by i. And this will be 8 bits. Really, I'm just going to use memcopy if I want to 
copy buffers over things where either I don't know the size or I don't know what type the buffers are or if they are not strictly null terminated. So string copy works off null termination and string in copy, at least it checks for that. Mem copy does not check for that, so that's one use case it, it differs in. And then 32 bits at a time will be a lot faster than 8 bits and eventually 64 bit OS. I'll make a mem copy 64, might as well. That'll be even better. But okay, how do I use these things? We'll go into print types here. And some of these, like for scrolling, I can change. Okay, so instead of doing this whole loop here, um, I can change this to essentially a mem copy. Since we're copying bytes from scroll 2 to scroll, I can basically just make that a mem copy here. And to make it even better, we'll do a mem copy 32. So into scroll, I'm going to put scroll 2. How many bytes do we want to copy over? Um, I'm going to kind of copy whatever this was here, right? Whatever we had in the original loop here as a condition. So the Y resolution minus the font height multiplied by uh, the bytes per scan line. And I don't need to divide by bytes per pixel, I don't think. Yeah, I shouldn't need to multiply by, uh, or divide by the bytes per pixel. That should be okay. We shouldn't need to do this anymore. And then where this is pointing at the last character row, technically I don't really need to do this either. Since we're filling the screen, whenever we clear the screen and on first boot, it clears it to the background color that is set, right? Really what I'm doing here is just setting it equal to the background color, so... It's, it's already going to be set to there, and when, whenever we draw a character, we're going to draw the foreground or background colors. So we don't really need to set that here because it will already have happened before this point wherever we're at. So I don't need this loop either to set the last line. Really, I can just decrement Y. So do a mem copy and decrement Y, and then we're, we should be good to go. Also, I don't need to do this frame buffer stuff because I'm going to return right after this. I'm skipping all this stuff and going to return right after we set the frame buffer but whenever we draw to the screen pixels or characters or whatnot whenever we enter this function I'm setting the frame buffer anyway so it doesn't matter what it equals at this point because it's going to be reset whenever we draw something you know drawing a character for example so we don't need that Similar stuff here. This this isn't applicable either, but I'll get rid of that in a second. I want to change the other scroll. Um, then copy 32. I'm going to put over under here where we have the scrolling. Then this we don't need to do. And that we don't need to do. Okay. So I just want to show that that works. We don't need the frame buffer. We don't need those. We can have a simple 32-bit copy from this point in the frame buffer into this point in the frame buffer. Because this is offset one line up anyway, and it's just doing what this is before, but, you know, a little more efficient. Four bytes at a time, and we don't need to work through the color of the pixel because it's already in the point that we're copying to. I don't think I need this point at the end anyway. So what this will do, instead of putting a background color after we copy, it just won't fill in that. So the color that is here before on the last line of the screen will not be overwritten, which is what this was doing before. So it should still say the background color, we're just stopping at the last line and not, not drawing that in anymore. So I'll see if that works. Um, redefinition, yeah, that's good. And string.h, uh, okay. Where did I do that? Oh, <laughs> I didn't copy. Memcopy32, that's the name of that. I'm a dork, okay. So 1D1D0E, which the editor went down by one. That's good, saving space here, 535C. This is still 1D, that's all we have to change. So 1024, 768. So is scrolling, scrolling's a bit faster now. I was going to say, is it any faster? It's a lot faster now. Um, I'll prove that with the, the 1920 by 1080 
32 bit per pixel, and I'll change the font, might as well. Which actually will probably do a little bit less processing since it's moving 18 pixels at a time instead of 16, so there's less lines to scroll. But maybe I might be wrong in that assumption, but um, that's still eh, that's a little eh, but it is a lot faster. And when I'm not recording, <laughs> it's it's faster still. I'm kind of hampering myself on CPU power right now anyway. But even though it's still not great, it's it's a bit faster than it was before, which is good. Um, we can also improve drawing characters and refactor that a little bit to use, if not memcopy, use 32 bits at a time. So I might go ahead and do that. If I get back here, I'm going to delete all these. Delete all the empty lines because we don't need them. This else we don't need. Actually, want to delete that. There we go. Okay. <laughs> this carriage return we don't need either because even though we're messing with the frame buffer, it's going to be reset whenever we enter this function. So we don't really need to mess with the frame buffer there. We can just set this to zero. Go to return. Kind of the same thing here with incrementing the cursor. We really don't need it since. This is just going to return anyway. But there's a lot of this that we're not using that we can take out. Don't like how that's, how that's working, so let's just do that. Okay. But take out those lines, we don't need them. Um, let's just, I'm just gonna ensure I didn't delete one thing extra that I didn't need to. I don't think I did, but I wasn't fully paying attention there. <laughs> so. Print reg, print min map, dir. Okay, now that's that's still working. Let's make sure the editor and stuff still works. Test test file. I know this is probably hard to read. I'm just making sure editor and stuff still works. Okay. Make sure we can still load the file and everything, and we can. Okay. Let's go back to print types here. Get rid of other stuff we don't need. Like the frame buffer, we do need it when we're drawing a character. But after we draw the character, when we increment, we don't really need to do that. Don't need to mess with the frame buffer because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all beyond this point. So those lines we don't need, and I'll prove that. Or we shouldn't need them, rather. Stuff is still drawn. If we go to the edge, like column 80 over here, it just keeps on, you know, it goes down and continues. So that works without setting the frame buffer. Because that's checked inside of character. Inside a print character, if it reaches 80, then it increments Y and it, you know, moves X to the beginning, carriage return. So we don't need to mess with the frame buffer for that because it's set again the next time we go into the function. Yeah, it's. <laughs> That's about all I have to say for that. I know these are minor, like, refactors, but I'm getting rid of lines of code, which is better than more. So, that's always good, right? That looks a lot cleaner, a lot less. 221 lines. These are mem copies. So, the other thing would be um, print character. So effectively what I can do, since I'm using 32 bits for these colors here, even though I'm taking 8 bits at a time here, what I can do is set 32 bits at a time and then increment frame buffer by the bytes per pixel still. And what that will do effectively is, well, I mean it'll set the color, but it'll increment for the next pixel, the next color, at its, you know, correct start position. So even if we're using 16 bits per pixel and it's 2 bytes at a time, and I write 32 bits at a time, it'll still increment this by two, and the next pixel will be drawn correctly. And when we're done drawing, we'll, we'll exit out. Okay, I think that's correct at least. So I can test that though by just doing this, and frame buffer will be, I'm gonna dereference the 32 bits. Yeah, I'm gonna dereference 32 bits. I'm gonna use extra, extra parentheses to be safe. 
but I'm gonna say get a 32-bit pointer to this frame buffer, even though we said it is, even though we said it is 8 bits up here. This 32 bits, I'm just going to set to the color because the color has a maximum value of 32 bits. So I'm just gonna do that. Point that out, put that over. And then this will be the background color. So we don't have to worry about these inner loops again. I'm just setting the full 32 bits at a time. That should be a little bit faster and it'll be okay because we're incrementing by the correct number of bytes anyway right here. So it doesn't seem like it should work. It seems like, eh, it's not good, but it actually does, um, actually does work for setting the pixel colors. So I'll see if that makes it a little bit faster. I can change it within the cursor as well, because that drawing isn't changed. Um, that is less lines of code, which is good. 0D now. 0D, 35, 52, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, right? I can into math, right? Do this. And I'm testing with 1080p 32 bits, just because that has a larger performance penalty. It's a lot more bytes that are moving when we scroll and everything. So it does it does have little hitches as it loads everything into RAM because you know my VM doesn't have a bunch of resources. And within that my VM I'm running QEMU and emulating with even less resources. So but it does it does scroll faster I think. Even if it doesn't seem much faster, this is a lot faster than it was. Hopefully at least a four times speed up from 32 bits at once of eight bits at a time so i think it's pretty much back to usable now which is good if we want a tiny bit more improvement we can mess with the cursor functions so nothing else has to change except these and well actually what i could have just done is is copy the lines right that would be faster Copying the lines would be a lot faster. Except this is background. This is where the cursor is being drawn. Actually, let me take those comments out of the print types file. Take those lines out because they're not being used. We can do the same thing here as well and remove cursor. Yeah, just delete those and drawing the background color. And then the other thing we can do is in clear screen, even though it's really not too slow, it's still a little slow. So we can do the same thing here. And just so I get practice typing it. <laughs> it was a 32-bit pointer to the frame buffer. That was how it was, and we're setting that equal just to the color that's passed in. And then we'll increment by bytes per pixel. Don't need to do that. And we should be good to go. This is X res times Y res. That's a little hard to see, so I'll do that. We don't really need to set this to a UNA. I'll just keep that there. But that should a little bit optimize the, the cursor and the clear screen and give us a little bit less lines of code as well which is good. So we reduce the file sizes and some of the lines of code, this video. And that doesn't happen too often, so I'm going to take that victory. And we'll do make run. This should be the last thing. It might not seem like it, but typing should be a little bit faster. We're moving the cursor and everything. And the clear screen should be faster. Although it doesn't seem like it, I just type stuff to scroll. And scrolling should be faster, even though it has a little hitches on my machine as it loads more stuff into memory and runs. That's just from my double emulator setup. Um, and again, this does run even faster when I'm not recording and everything at the same time. But it, it seems to work, it's, it works pretty well. There's a little issue when you change font on the last line of the screen. It's blank, you know, because I have the new lines and stuff being weird. And then you can't see the cursor, so. I have to clear screen and then go back. So I might look at that, and that's a little bug. It's probably easy to fix. But other than that, I think we're, uh, we're pretty good to go. Let's make a final, final test file here. 
Triple H, brother. Oh, well, no, that's Hulk Hogan. I don't remember what Triple H's catchphrases were. But anyway, Triple H file there. This won't load, I don't think. Or yeah, it will, because it's not a bin. It doesn't matter what it is. Okay. So we're good. Everything works. Everything loads. We can even go and change stuff to... Let's make it yellow on red. Do you remember the old XP, or maybe 95, whenever? It had the... uh. It had the hot dog theme, right? So this is the hot dog theme, and there's no reason to show this other than I thought it was funny. <laughs> so if your eyes aren't seared from the the condiment special on display, then oh well. So, but this is blinding rage, and it's it's hard to see blinding red. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for this. I think we're good to go here. Got generic fonts working. So the next the next video, of this I'm going to. Um, I'm going to work on interrupts. I'm going to implement an interrupt descriptor table. It'll be in C. It'll probably be in the kernel. I'll have like another another file or two to include and stuff, but I'll have like an interrupts folder and stuff in there. You know, the first 31 interrupts are exceptions, so I'll set those up in their own area. I'll have a, I'll have a default exception that doesn't do anything. A uh, handler, default exception handler, which is just a function that you put into the interrupt descriptor table. So all, all the things are going to be is just functions that, that are written in C that I'm going that I'm going to sort of point um, the interrupt descriptor table to. So if it says, oh, you called interrupt 10, I want to go to the 10th interrupt in the table, and it'll point to that function. But I'll, I'll get into that in the next video. But I'll have interrupts, um, software and hardware interrupts, setting the programmable interrupt controller, the PIC. The PIC is for hardware interrupts. And if there's enough time, um, or it's not too long, I can go into system calls. So we can set up int ADH or another number as a software interrupt that'll work for system calls from programs we call, like the editor, whatever you want to write. You can call into the kernel, and the kernel can allocate memory or do whatever. So system calls, you know, and they aren't too bad. But that'll be an inline assembly for that handler. Uh, but yeah, interrupts probably on the next one after that. I'm not sure. It'll be something. <laughs> Let me know what you want to see. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it. And I will catch you on the next one. So, cheers.